Hey, what's up, guys? Today I'm coming to you with a review of the Shang Shaolin Long. Now, I haven't made a review in quite a while, like a real serious edited review since August 2012, my Shang Shao 5x5 one, and I realized that my old ones were always slow, laggy, and boring. They never got to the point, and I just kind of want to do that this time, so let's go. The Shang Shao Ling Long is Shang Shao's newest 3x3 cube. It's a mini 46mm cube. As compared to a standard 57mm Shang Shao Wind, it's quite a bit smaller, and I'm not going to get my ruler out, but I'm pretty sure I can trust Shang Shao that this is indeed 46mm. Next up, we'll take a quick look at the stickers. They're completely standard. I don't know what else to say about them, but yeah, just standard. And before we get into the turning of the Shang Shao Ling Long and how it moves and everything, I think we should take a look at the mechanism pictures so we know why everything happens. Looking at the edge, you can notice this unique golf ball type texture, which has a similar job to a track to reduce friction. You can also notice the torpedo to reduce edge popping, which is the first I've seen from Shang Shao. Taking a look at the corner, you can notice that it is quite standard. The only thing exceptional is that the bases are rounded. You can also notice by this picture that the bases must be quite large, because when only the corner is held, the whole cube hangs by itself. As for the mechanism as a whole, you can see that it has a mini little fluorine mod, and also that it's probably not going to lock up due to having such a simple mechanism. You can also notice that the hole in the inside is quite small compared to other cubes, which definitely helps the anti-popping mechanism. Now that you've seen the mechanism, let me just quickly go over what I've done to the cube. I've loosened the cube quite a good amount, maybe two or three 360 degree turns, and I put maybe three drops of Marlube in this, and it is really, really good. No, I did not lube the core. You don't need to for this cube because there is no springy noise that you hear. Alright, so now I'm just going to do a bunch of turning. And if, if you're here just to see the turning and everything, you know, hopefully I can just get this out of the way for you. Just leave. First off, let's take a look at the corner cutting. As you can see, it's pretty standard, you know, what we normally see these days. Actually, kind of surprising considering the holes actually aren't that big. Um, but, you know, <laughs> if it corner cuts, it corner cuts. Let's not get into the science of it. Now let's get to the serious problems, what you actually experience in solves. Pops, lockups, and corner twists. As far as pops go, this cube will not pop, I'll tell you that. The corner bases are big, the torpedoes completely stop the cube from popping, it, it just won't. Like, it, it might fall out of your hand if you're going rough, um, it won't pop up, and if you're going pretty rough, it'll either A, fall out of your hand, or B, lock up. Which, you know, it doesn't happen often, but it might lock up. Uh, see, like, those little things, which I was trying to force there. But in an actual solve, honestly, I don't experience much. Like, I'm just going to do a solve for you right here. Hopefully I don't get out of the camera of you. Let me go lower so I don't do anything. It, it won't lock up. Like, I'm serious here. It, it might lock up a little bit on your, you know, fast OLL, PLL outs. But honestly, it doesn't affect my times that much. Lastly, the corner twists, they're pretty easy to do on purpose. And as I said, I loosened it quite a lot. And, you know, it does backfire a little bit. And honestly, I don't actually get corner twists that often in solves. So I don't really care, to be honest. Especially because it's a small cube. It's usually harder to get corner twists on smaller cubes because there's less of a chance of your thumb or forefinger running over it. So to be honest, I'd actually recommend having quite loose tensions. Because as you can see, these problems do not arise very often. So now that we've looked at the problems of the Ling Long, let's take a look at the turning and performance of the cube. The Ling Long is a very smooth cube, and it's also very quiet. I find it quite similar to the Shang Shao Wen. The noise is kind of high-pitched and clacky, but it doesn't bother me that much because it's just so quiet. And I really like having such a quiet and small cube because it's great for on-the-go solving. Now for the overall performance. It's very fluid and this never really catches or locks up at all as I've said, thanks to the awesome round mechanism. I call this cube an unstoppable cube, it just doesn't want to stop moving, it's like it wants to move. I should also mention that you're not going to want to stop solving because it's just so tiny and it won't hurt your fingers at all just being so small. The speed of the cube can be basically as fast or slow as you want. I have it very fast because I put so much Maru Lube in it. And I personally really like it. And one thing that I really love about this cube is the M layers. Now let me show you a .98 Z perm that I got with this. Yes! .980! 
Yes. So as you saw, I almost got my PBZ perm with such a small cube, which is very surprising. I mean, you just think that it would be impossible to turn the M layers since it's so small, but somehow it's just so great. As far as OH solving goes for this cube, it's really not that great. Sometimes I find myself overshooting and turning like this, and I really don't like that, having such a small cube. Personally, I think if you're going to get this cube, it's not going to be any of your mains. So my recommendation for it is, I'd say yes, unless you're an all out. Every cube I got to get has to be in my main. No wasting money. I want you to count your cubes that you have that are not your mains. That's right, you probably have a lot more than you thought. And you realize that getting cubes that aren't going to be your mains is not that big of a deal. So what's the final verdict? I'd say recommendation, yes. Buy it for $6.80 from icepay.com now. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.